Was a balmy summer evening and a goodly crowd was there, which well nigh filled Joe's bar room on the corner of the square. And his songs and witty stories came through the open door. A vagabond crept slowly in and posed upon the floor. Where did it come from? Someone said. The wind has blown it in. What does it want? Another cried. Some whiskey, rum, or gin? Here, Toby, seek him if your stomach's equal to the work. I wouldn't touch him with a fork. He's filthy as a Turk. This badinage the poor wretch took with stoical good grace. In fact, he smiled as though he thought he'd struck the proper place. Come, boys, I know there's kindly hearts among so good a crowd. To be in such good company would make a deacon proud. Uh, give me a drink. That's what I want. I'm out of funds, you know. When I had the cash to treat the gang, this hand was never slow. What? You laugh as if you thought this pocket never held a sou. I once was fixed as well, my boys, as any one of you. There, thanks. That braced me nicely. God bless you, one and all. Next time I pass this good saloon, I'll make another call. Give you a song? No, I can't do that. My singing days are past. My voice is cracked, my throat's worn out, and my lungs are going fast. Say, give me another whiskey, Ed, and I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you a funny story and a fact I promise to. That ever I was a decent man, not one of you would think, but I was. Some four or five years back, they give me another drink. Fill her up, Joe. I want to put some life into my frame. Such little drinks to a bum like me are miserably tame. Five fingers there, that's the scheme, and cork and whiskey, too. Well, here's luck, boys, and landlord, my best regards to you. Well, you've treated me pretty kindly, and I'd like to tell you how I came to be the dirty shot you see before you now. As I told you, once there was a man with muscle, frame, and health, but for a blunder ought to have made considerable wealth. I was a painter, oh, not one that daubed on bricks and wood, but an artist, for my age was rated pretty good. I worked hard at my canvas and was bidden fair to rise, for gradually I saw the star of fame before my eyes. I made a picture, perhaps you've seen, tis the, uh, the chase of fame. It brought me 1,500 pounds and added to my name. And then, then I met a woman. Now comes the funny part With eyes that petrified my brain And sunk into my heart Why don't you laugh? It's funny that the vagabond you see Could ever love a woman And expect her love for me But t'was so And for a month or two Her smiles were freely given And when her loving lips touched mine It carried me to hell Boys, did you ever see a girl For whom your soul you'd give? With a form like the Milo Venus, too beautiful to live. With eyes that would beat the Kohinoor and a wealth of chestnut hair. If so, t'was she, for there never was another half so fair. I was working on a portrait one afternoon in May of a fair-haired boy, a friend of mine who lived across the way. And Madeline admired it, and much to my surprise, she said she'd like to know the man that had such dreamy eyes. Well, it didn't take long to know him, and before the month had flown, my friend had stole my darling, and I was left alone. And ere a year of misery had passed above my head, the jewel I had treasured so had tarnished and was dead. That's why I took to drink, boys, why I never saw you smile. I thought you'd be amused and laughing all the while. Why, what's the matter, friend? There's a teardrop in your eye. Come, <laughs> laugh, laugh like me. Tis only babes and women that should cry. Hey, boys, if you, if you give me just another whiskey, I, I'll be glad. I, and I'll draw right here a picture of the face that drove me mad. <clears throat> 
Jim, give me, give me that piece of chalk with which you marked the baseball score. You shall see the lovely Madeline upon the barroom floor. Another drink, and with chalk in hand, the vagabond began to sketch a face that might well buy the soul of any man. Then, as he placed another lock upon the shapely head, with a fearful shriek, he leaped and fell across the picture, dead. Dead. 